so. Yeah, very, 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 very easy. And to give you an idea of how many people are absolutely convinced it helps them, I mean, I've spoken to multiple sclerosis uh, patients who said that they were wheelchair bound before they started low dose naltrexone, and now when I see or talk to them, you never think they were ever ill. Uh, they, they're really that incapacitated. And th that pharmacy, Dixon's, does over 30,000 scripts, uh, just one pharmacy. So it shows that a lot of people have woken up to the benefit. Now, you showed that paper, LDN and Cancer. Yep. When I started writing these scripts out for cancer patients, I was told I was the only one who was writing low-dose naltrexone script for cancer patients. And after that paper was published, he now tells me that there's, there's many doctors writing it out. So they know, and they know there's a benefit. So it should, there should be a forum for approving this. And there should, be a way, there should be a way of collecting this data prospectively. Mm. It's basically a stage four clinical trial, isn't it? It is. Um, you know, well, why don't we do, which is better than a stage three clinical trial. It is a much better. And this is why I, it's interesting mentioning lenalidomide. Lenalidomide had stage four approval in France before it was ever approved here using the stage four process because there was, it was seen to be such an unmet need. And, of course, that stage four process proved it. Uh, but the regulatory agencies don't take that kind of data they, they look for the stage three data yeah the, the, well, the I 20 the 20 million dollar rct industry funded data yeah well, well we now know the only reason for doing that is to keep anything useful out out of uh, the patient's hands <laughs> i mean i hate to be so cynical but, I, but my experience leads uh, me uh, to it's oh, completely oh, realistic yeah and so the the other thing is that you know a stage four study is much better than the stage mm. uh, a big randomized study for these agents which are already freely available for everybody. Yes. Why, do, why do you need to do that? Now, I've, I've looked at something else which I'm not going to mention uh, on this. I'm not going to complicate any further. But something I thought, thought, thought might help for the joints. It was, and it was, again, it was recommended by a patient. So I tried it. And so I tried it. It improved. I stopped. The problem came back. I took it again. Disappeared. I did this randomized, non-controlled trial on myself and came to the con only conclusion was this was really superb for me. Mm. I didn't need to wait for a randomized, controlled trial of this, this mm. thing, which is never going to be done, by the way. Because so, all the basic to toxicology, the stage one and stage two stuff's already been done. It's... Yes, all that's been done. Yeah. And yeah. actually, we've, we've also, we've also uh, done that the... Um, why is it 4.5 milligram and below and not 4.5 milligram and above? Because they're two different drugs, the, the way they're absorbed. You know, all drugs come in, in two forms. It's the uh, same molecule. It's the same molecule, but in a different form. And the, the first form is absorbed up to 4.5. After that, it's drowned out by the other molecule. You have left molecules and right molecules. This became very, very important with thalidomide. Oh, because I, see, they, I see. It's the chirality. They, chirality. They found that one of them was the, the cause of the uh, birth defects. Yes. So they very cleverly spent, and I spoke to the guy who actually did all this work, uh, So I know, and they, they then converted it and made it just in the right form. Yeah, all L form or L or D form, whatever. Yeah, exactly. But as soon as they, get, they gave it to various animals and things, but as soon as they gave it to humans, the human liver immediately converts it back to the left. <laughs> so uh, the, 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 the left was the teratogenic form, was it? Yeah, I, I, I can't be 100% sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to go down as... Yeah, yeah, yeah no, sorry, it's a two I, I would have to check the thing, because yeah, I have yeah. done chirality. But, but anyway, you can, you, can give, you can give the right thalidomide and the human yes. liver will convert it into the teratogenic form of the exactly. thalidomide. Exactly, and that's what this guy sat down and uh, told me. He said, this is why, and I used his evidence to put pressure on them to make the analogues. Because I said, it's pointless going down the chiral path. This guy's already done it. It's Just out of, of interest, the, 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 the linolidamide, lina is mm. that teratogenic? No, it's not. Um, but it has to be treated as such because yes. of its close yes, relationship of with, the, with the lidamide. Yeah. 
In fact, it has it has very few side effects uh, uh, compared to thalidomide. Um, when I was doing a lot of work with thalidomide, I, I was the one I told them I to, uh, told Celgene. I said that we have a big issue, a big problem, and this is how I got the analogs done. I said the I'm not worried about teratogenicity, but it's very clear for uh, conditions, chronic conditions, cancer, you need to give this drug for a long time daily. But everybody starts getting neuropathy, whether it be six, eight weeks. It, it's, okay. it, it's, it's absolutely, uh, you, you cannot continue with it. So you must... This is, this make, is, this is with the linalidomide. Yeah, yeah. No, so that's what sparked them to finally make all these drugs. And again, we just screened them all, but and lenalidomide just full, ticked all the boxes. Oh, so so you, you, you don't get the neuropathy with the lenalidomide? No, do. and then when it went into the clinic, this is the first thing I was looking for. You don't get it? You don't get it, and oh, actually, right. people who had neuropathy from thalidomide said it actually improved when they went to lenalidomide. So yeah. the thalidomide causes neuropathy, the lenalidomide yeah. does not no, cause neuropathy? No, it does not, no. But it does treat myeloma and lymphoma. Yeah, it's, it's even better than thalidomide in, in, all, in inhibiting all the main pathways. And this is, this is another really important thing. Lenalidomide, pomalidomide, they inhibit so many pathways. They inhibit inflammatory and yeah. it's a whole range. And so much so that Celgene told me to stop looking because they, <laughs> they only wanted one good uh, yeah. explanation. Yeah, but it fulfills Bradford Hill really nicely, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, but what is interesting it, from that book, uh, but that paper that you showed that we yeah. did, low dose naltrexone is exactly the same. The yes. more we look, the more we look, the more pathways it interferes with. Well, I, I've, I've, got, I've got four um, arresting tumor growth, increasing apoptosis increasing immunity and reducing inflammation mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, and another one it seems to be that it promotes gene expression of pro uh, apoptotic yes this is the brilliant, proteins that's right this is the brilliant work that Wei Lu did amazing uh, he did all this off his own bat he sounds like a really useful guy this oh he's fantastic <laughs> he, he came to me having uh, had a, a big um, history and past in uh, looking at uh, scientific aspects of the cannabinoids yes so, i've read some of those papers yeah, yeah. It, it's really really good and he was able to show that in some cases there's a synergy between ldn and the cannabinoids and more importantly due to what i i thought there had been a big error in the lab he showed that the cannabinoids are, have significant anti-cancer activity only if they're used intermittently so isn't that take, interesting if it, you take them daily nothing happens is that true is that true for the ldn as well for low dose naltrexone well people have, have posited this that uh, this might be better three days on or three days off really? my argument is i've always used it daily at the low doses and at the low doses it's only in the blood for a few hours so it is intermittent it is passed oh, right, yeah that's my yeah. argument that uh, so but with the cbd stuff and we did it in a range of cell lines it's very clear in fact i thought i thought they'd got everything mixed up when they gave me all the results because the guy the, the, the cell lines that were dying faster and quicker were the ones that had cbd for three days and then withdrawn that was just meant to be using as a control for the effect of washing out the nutrients, the food for the cells. They do. It's a regular thing to do. And I said, this is unbelievable. So, sorry, say that last bit again, Gus. I didn't. It, why, it, why is it? it that you, when you're looking at cell deaths, say, over a month, you, yeah. you, have to, you have to sort of keep the food and liquid and nutrients up. So you sort of wash the cells out and put them in fresh nutrients all the time. Yes. And, and so... When you're looking at the long-term effect, you, so you give them their food and water, basically, and you continue the CBD. But just to see whether that process has any effect on it, mm. you, you, you wash it out and see, or to see whether the benefits short-term or long-term. But it was so clear, three days followed by a washout, then no more, the cells go into apoptosis like you wouldn't believe. If you keep the same dose of CBD up, the cells just go a bit slow 
They don't I mean, die. We, we, have you got they, a, they slow it's down. A bit ge- it's a bit geeky, but is there a mechanism for that? Well, my only, my only explanation, and if other people have uh, got one, I'd love to hear it and be explained, but my only gut feeling explanation is we are watching cold, cold turkey here. The, the tumour cell lines have got rapidly addicted to the cannabinoid pathways. And in cells, you know, the opiate and the cannabinoid pathways, they're really big, important uh, pathway yeah. cells. So they've got very highly addicted to it, and then you stop it, and then they go into ap- apoptosis. I mean, Amazing. So there's something about the, the intracellular biochemistry which becomes tolerant to the presence of a particular molecule. Yeah. Yeah, so once again, it opens up, and that's another reason. Like, uh, you, there, there's several other drugs which might be better off in low doses and intermittency. You know, there's, there, I think it's a, it's a whole new potential of the pharmacology. As I said, it really I, is a whole is a whole new way of thinking. That to it me, it is. Yeah, and, and it, 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 to me, it's just incredible. Having been brought up, the more is the better, because that is yeah. oncology. In yeah. fact, you uh, we don't. Um, uh, when you develop a drug, basically uh, chemotherapy drugs, there's a thing called LD50. I mean, they yes, keep up the lethal dose, dose yeah, the mm. scent of the mice are dead, and then yeah, they start yeah. around that and reduce it. Just so, which is why so many of them are so toxic. It's because that they're they're developed like that, and I would say that there's no need for it. No, no, I agree completely. But it, we have the same with aspirin as well. You know, post MI, for example, post heart attack, 300 milligrams of sublingual mm. aspirin. Is more effective than 600 milligrams of sublingual aspirin so absolutely yeah, you know, yeah. there's that sweet spot this window this this therapeutic range mm. Mm. Um, and just let me just let me uh r- remind myself that's a please <laughs> i think in the the graham rook who developed mycobacterium vacai for tb to boost the immune system for tb protection he was doing all the studies were going being done in africa in order to um, boost its efficacy, you could see there was some. He did, uh, they increased the dose, no difference. But he did what is, enters into this territory. He started reducing the dose. And a tenth of the dose, the response was far, far better. So it's another gate, uh, low dose. So the vacai and OBNC are a fraction of the dose in which they were initially developed. Really? No. So once again, it is, uh, and so these things are what I call bell-shaped curve. Yeah. So you get to the top, and that's low-dose naltrexone is at the top. Give more, you lose the F benefit, just like that. So it's a biological, actually. If you got to classify it, it's a biological, because it, yeah. it's not the more the merrier. I mean, I mean but many people watching will realise what a massive pandemic tuberculosis is. I mean, it's huge in Africa and India and Asia and, and causes indescribable suffering. I mean, I, I, I saw a child with uh, tuberculosis meningitis in, in India. And it, the, the, you could just see this child was suffering this most intolerable um, pain and agitation from the meninges. Mm-hmm. And it, it, even if being treated, it would take... With traditional treatments, it would take weeks for the inflammation to go down. You know, if we could protect people again, from against this, that is, it, it's it's hard to describe how massive an opportunity this is. Mm. Well, you and know, it's simply it, being ignored by 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 international agencies, as far as I can see. Yes, and, and uh, we'd like to know why when they suck so much money out of our governments for vaccinating the world. Garvey, Seppi, United Nations, are all Bill Gates behind it, and Fauci working away there when there is something really simple and I know they've all seen this data uh, because uh, you know emissaries have given it to these people and they just basically show no interest at all. Uh, the the MVACI what needs to be uh, appreciated about it that they did a study and it kept, I think it was led by uh, people from University College uh, they did it in Africa in HIV and HIV the height of it they gave the vacai to people HIV positive yep. there was no treatment in tuberculosis areas where there was a high yep. risk of tuberculosis and of course the, the, the HIV and the TB together are real bad double uh, whammy, real unbelievable yeah. but they had a highly significant uh, reduction in TB infection in those given the vacai compared wow. to the control now that alone should be enough for these agencies to take it up and run with it. 